use of wheels. You should get to know roll tech. What happens to those millions of used tires discarded by consumers every year? Well, thanks to green and consciousness, a lot of them get recycled, ground into chrome rubber, and put into brand new uses. Uses that help keep our world as green as possible by recycling post-consumer discards into something that has a renewed purpose. Rolltech LLC of Hickory, North Carolina, USA takes millions of pounds of that recycled crumb oh, like Adam and Finley. makes tires and wheels out of it and yeah. on equipment such as hand trucks and residential trash cards. Rolltech's unique manufacturing process starts with one-ton bales of crumb rubber being loaded into the mixing hopper. The crumb rubber moves through a series of conveyors and is dispensed into pots, which are then loaded into the tire compression molds. After a curing period, the tires come out of the molds and go through the first of several inspections. Meanwhile, in another area of the plant, the hubs for the wheels are being made. They're injection molded from recycled plastic materials. Tires and hubs come together in the assembly operation, where the tires are mounted on the hubs. The snap lock wheels have their tires mounted on the hubs, and the snap lock pins inserted in a single automated operation. The finished wheels are palletized for a customer order and are ready for shipping. Rolltech wheels are in use every day in many parts of the world, specified by communities and cart manufacturers for their rollout waste carts. You can find Rolltech's VSP wheels in use on many of the most popular brands of hand trucks, tilt trucks, and the like. The solid rubber tread on Rolltech's snap lock wheel makes for a very quiet rolling car compared to the noisy all plastic wheels found on some cars. If your product uses wheels, you should get to know Rolltech so you can benefit from the Rolltech advantage too. All right, so you guessed it. That was uh, two up front? Yeah. Okay, all right, we'll wait. So Adam Finley, uh, Finley Advertising produced that video for us probably 12 years ago now. Um, he's been good to work with. I don't oh, know who, who knows Alan besides us. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll be in paying for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's been that long, yeah. It's been that long, yeah. It's been a while. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nancy. Come on, Come on. Sit right there. Come on in. It's okay. There's one here, one here. We were just getting ready to take out $100 bills. Thank you. So Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Jake, right there. Right there, Jake. Yeah, that's on the front. No, no, no. I'm just No. 645. Where are you? We're going to take the pressure off of these two right here. <laughs> Welcome to Roll Tech. I'm Todd Blair. Uh, I'm the general manager here. We're gonna uh, this morning. We're gonna take a look at uh, some of our products, take a plant tour, answer any questions you have, and then let you guys get on with your day. Uh, I was a Rotarian for several years myself, so I appreciate what you do. Uh, thank you for the service that you provide and the and the good things that you do in our community and in, in our world. We're happy to have you here this morning, and uh, hopefully we can. Teach you something you didn't know and show you something interesting. And normally we don't. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, we normally one, start at seven. One of us was lost driving <laughs> round and round. So it's my fault. Uh, I will give them a, uh, a buy on this because one of the problems is that sometimes GPS takes you to the wrong place here. Takes you to clean sport. Takes you, yeah. And and the reason is is because this road out here, our address is Performance Drive, but this road out here is a private drive. Um, it is not. It is not annexed by the city yet. It's not. It's not on the city maps. So Performance Drive actually ends in the cul-de-sac. And at some point, there was a 25th Street Drive court place mm -hmm. or something that this road was called. And there's another one of those across Tate Boulevard over there. So sometimes it'll take you over there. And that's probably what happened to them. It's not their fault. Uh, oh, GG. 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 You do not know this club. Yeah. <laughs> so, that did work. We, uh, let me give you a little history on this company. This company uh, was started in North Carolina about 23 years ago now. 
there was a French company called Guitel, which had European operations to make wheels primarily for residential rollout trash carts. And one of their largest customers, Auto Environmental, decided to build a plant in Charlotte. And Guitel said, hey, if you're gonna build a plant to make waste carts, we're gonna build a plant to make wheels. <clears throat> so this plant started, had one customer, and it made one product uh, for several years to, to feed the, uh, the cart manufacturer down in Charlotte. And then over the years, we've developed a lot of different products uh, outside of wheels even, uh, and many different wheel options <clears throat> that I'll show you a little bit about. Um, after about eight years, uh, the operations manager for uh, the company, a guy named Patrice Bertrand, French, um, he had the opportunity to buy the company, and so he did. And then he owned the company up until uh, March of last year uh, when we sold it and uh, sold it to a private equity group uh, that has another holding called Impact Plastics up in Chicago. Impact serves primarily the waste industry. A little bit over 50% of our revenue goes to the waste industry. So um, <clears throat> Impact's goal is to be a, a service provider and a, uh, a component provider to the waste industry. And so we, we brought the residential rollout trash cart wheel option to them. It made a lot of sense to add us. Um, <clears throat> So Patrice is now retired. Uh, I, came, I joined Roll Tech in 2009, um, initially as a consultant uh, to help him sell the business. And uh, we had it sold and then changed our minds. And uh, he, uh, he brought me in as an equity partner in 2016. And then we uh, were able to sell the business in 2019. And so um, I'm still general manager here as long as they'll have me. And uh, we've got some interesting things on the on the docket. We are experimenting with some polyurethane foam product uh, to make a tire for wheels. We're expanding our wheel um, capacity because we've run out of capacity. Uh, we've recently added another injection molding machine, and we're looking at adding some compression molding machines in order to get us through our busy season. The, the trash market is somewhat seasonal. Um, there's always trash, but they don't always roll out new waste carts. Uh, they need good weather for that, especially up in Canada, where about 50% of our revenue actually goes. Uh, the, the rubber tire wheel is a premium product from a price perspective. Uh, it's almost twice the cost of an all plastic blow molded or injection molded wheel. So unless there's a real reason to have a rubber tire wheel in a cart, it's difficult to get a municipality to, to spend the extra money. Uh, up north, there is a real reason. It's very cold, you get a lot of freeze-thaw cycles, and uh, an all-plastic wheel just doesn't perform as well. So um, where you have cold weather environments, where you have a need for uh, quiet rolling, maybe a very uh, a dense population where there are a lot of carts and people don't want to hear that at 6 a.m., um, where you have a need for uh, a little bit more impact resistance uh, for whatever reason, and wherever you have a need for a bottom heavy cart. We have some municipalities that they're in a very windy area, and uh, my wheel, my 12 inch wheel, weighs a little bit over five pounds. Uh, the 12 the inch all plastic option weighs about a pound and a half, so you can add a lot more weight to the bottom of the cart. When the cart is empty, it's less likely to blow over or, or blow around um, <clears throat> in those environments. So we're glad to have some uniquenesses. Uh, we also make uh, what's called a VSP wheel or a Super Ram. Those are our brand names. Those are for material handling. If you have a hand truck or if you've ever used a U-Haul hand truck um, and it had a solid rubber tire wheel on it, it was probably made in this plant. Uh, the hand truck business in North America is strong. I don't know where all these hand trucks go, but um, I mean, it's amazing. I have a U-Haul hand truck that 
coincidentally doesn't have a roll tech wheel on it because it's got a different type wheel. Um, <clears throat> but I've had that thing for probably 20 years and never had an issue with it. And so I always thought of a hand truck as something that you, know, you get one and it lasts forever. But we sell, uh, we will sell this year um, about 600,000 wheels to go on hand trucks. Mm -hmm. And so that's 300,000 new hand trucks in North America and the solid rubber tire wheel option is not the number one option. The pneumatic tire, uh, an air filled tire is the number one option for a hand truck. So I don't know where all these hand trucks are going, but I'm glad they're going somewhere. <laughs> um, and, and that business is, it's solid and it's steady and I like it because when we have seasonality in our waste business, we have a material handling business to uh, keep people employed, keep the machines running, etc. Uh, so right now we have um, a little bit over 40 people in the plant. We will <coughs> peak this year somewhere around 65 uh, during, during our peak season. Um, so that is one of the issues we have with, with people is that uh, because of our seasonality, we can't keep the same people employed throughout a year. Um, so we do a lot of ramping up and hiring, and then um, we don't technically lay people off. Um, we just look at things like efficiency, attendance, and with the labor market the way it's been in the last few years, it's been pretty easy to find people who you can um, asked to not come to work anymore. Um, it's been very difficult to find people to ask to come to work who will when they're supposed to and work and do the job they're supposed to and not have issues with all kinds of personal problems. But um, is anybody else in manufacturing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the, it's a tight labor market right now. Um, <clears throat> it really has been for the last probably four years. Uh, I don't know, Haney, what what your what Klingspor's experience is right now. But well, we want to shift operation, and people at Klingspor, they don't we don't rotate much. It's a very stable. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the manufacturing part. Yeah. Yeah. And the skill, the, the skills that's necessary, something that you teach. That yeah. Where they, they know. Yeah. This is um, so we can uh, we'll pass a couple things around. I'll start this one on this side. Um, some people call that a rubber ring. I call it a tire. Uh, there's another one you can take a look at. So this is a cross section of a tire. Um, I've got a hole in here so you can kind of stretch it and, and feel it. We really, what we really make here is just big rubber bands. Uh, and then we stretch fit those onto hubs to make a wheel. The reason I did the cross section is so that you could actually <coughs> see the cross section and see the um, see what, what the compressed rubber actually looks like after it's molded. We, we lit that right there literally started with a powder which was very finely ground Crumb. recycled tires. Yeah. Uh, and and doesn't I don't think it, but does it matter the type of tire do you have to separate the tires you get? It does. Um, and I'm not going to go into detail of that because that's a, it's a that secret sauce. Yeah. Uh, this is mostly SBR. Uh, well, there's SBR in this. There's it's uh, there's a lot of truck tire in there, and then there's some buffings. Uh, do you do your own modified compounding? We do not. Okay. No. Uh, we uh, we are a sulfur vulcanizer, so we use sulfur as a catalyst um, to create a chemical reaction and um, and create cross links in the polymer chains. So. Um, there are a lot of scientists who uh, say that it's not possible what we do, and so we don't talk a lot about the, uh, the little intricacies and details of it, but... Uh, did the chemistry evolve in France, or did you derive that chemistry here? It came from France. That's what I thought, okay. Yeah, yeah it came from France. Uh, the parent company that used to, used to own this is still active in France, still making product yeah. over there, uh, and as a matter of fact, in rare instances, we will buy some tires from them for, for really slow moving parts that we don't have tooling for. Uh, rather than make it here, we'll just bring a couple pallets of uh, some strangely configured tire over from them. Um, uh, the French are interesting. 
to deal with. Uh, <laughs> very, very different culture. Uh, and it's always like pulling teeth to try to get them to do something you want them to do. If you can get them because they're on vacation a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Or and their plant, their plant, yeah, their plant shuts down like three times a year for two or three weeks at a time. Um, and if you need product, they do not care uh, what your timing <laughs> needs are. So that's, really right. that's the difference between Europe and and the U.S. is that the lead times are drastically reduced here. It's, yeah, you need it like in two days versus two. Six, right. Three, six, right. Six. We have the same problem with our parent company. Yeah. They don't. Uh, there's no regard to. Right. Question, Todd, did you ever think of like a, like the shopping cart, like what Technibel does, the shopping cart wheels, is that something that you've ever made? Uh, we've looked at that. Um, <clears throat> one of the things about this technology for the rubber is that we have to have a certain mass, we have to have a certain size in order to create um, the polymer crosslink and to create a, a, a stable <coughs> rubber ring. And that four inch wheel that they use on shopping carts uh, is too small. Really. Not enough mass. There's not enough mass there um, to be able to make it. The other thing about that product is that it is very commodity based. Mm -hmm. I mean, their margins are like a penny or two per wheel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we would, if we had to get into that business, we would look at it, but we have other higher margin business that we can. I'm up with a machine that fixed the damn come thing. I get the broken one every day. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggles and wobbles. You come up with a machine to like balance it, you know, Bob? Balance? Where are you? Balance? Cart? Oh, brother. I don't you don't get a broken cart every time you go somewhere? Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. You talking about the shopping cart? Yeah, yeah. that's what I was talking about. That's what he's complaining oh, about. Yeah. Yeah. Richard and I were talking about can someone come Nothing up with a machine. Nothing wrong with the cart, it's the you know, operator. Yeah. You can tool that wheel and get it to not, you know, yeah. you know yeah. all the things it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because they slide yeah. sideways out there in the parking lot and it scrapes yeah. it. How do you mess that wheel up? I'm like, how do people do that? It looks indestructible. But it's a bearing. It's. Do you have to extend the warranty? Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you have any patents on what you do? Yes. Yeah, the, uh, the rubber technology we we can't patent because it's it's pre-existing and it's also um, it's been around for a long time. So it's it's really just something we have to be careful with and keep a secret. Um, but we have patents on some designs. Um, we we actually just recently abandoned a patent for this because it became too too difficult, but um, this is a two-shot process. This is an over-molded wheel. It's two different materials that are um, <coughs> actually chemically bonded together. Uh, this is an ethylene plastic. Mm -hmm. This is a propylene-based um, rubber compound that actually has a high percentage of micronized crumb rubber, so it's got a lot of recycled tire in it. And um, we, we created this in order to um, create a quiet rolling wheel that is primarily injection molded to try to get our price point down and compete with the lower cost options. Um, and there were so many uh, there were so many other patents that were just really close to this that it we didn't um, we didn't feel like it was worth pursuing anymore, so I'll pass that around. Um, the, the mechanism that we use to lock a wheel on is called a snap lock. If you look down in the in the bore of that, mm -hmm. um, you've got a, uh, a pin that is spring pressurized and snaps onto a grooved axle. Uh, that process is not patented. Um, we, we recently got into a couple new products. This is a this is a flooring tile. We've got some uh, some walk waves that are paved outside with this. It's a slip resistant, uh, all rubber uh, flooring tile. Yeah. You're going to compete used. in railroad crossings? No. Um, <laughs> no, not with that product. Um, we did look at a at a a product for railroad crossings that is still an option. Um, that. <clears throat> We can't really make that big of a product here in our presses, and so we, we would have to, it would be a capital investment, and it would be 
probably not a sulfur cured product, but a polyurethane bound. It suits your technology, but not your process. Right, right. Pardon me a second, I'm going to grab this. This is another product that we've gotten into in the last couple of years. Bumpers, uh, bumpers. This is not a finished product. We, we would finish this by drilling uh, bolt holes through this, but neat. this is a simple um, bumper. And if you yep. pay attention to the back yeah, of, a, yep. of a trailer, mm -hmm. uh, dock, dock chocks. Mm -hmm. Rubber yeah. baby bumpers. So, dock chocks is, uh, is a product that we don't currently make. <coughs> we, uh, we've looked at it. That's really a low margin product as well. Um, but literally, we can take our process and uh, make a solid rubber part of some sort to, to fill it uh, a need. And our big advantage there is that whereas somebody who's using um, a high percentage of natural rubber or SBR or some other man-made rubber uh, in a process like that, whereas they might be paying 70 cents to a dollar a pound for material uh, our total material cost is averages about somewhere just under 15 cents a pound uh, so we've got a big advantage there we can afford to put a little bit more labor into a process because of the savings on material cost and then hopefully have a little more margin uh, when it's all said and done in your compression molding what's your energy source steam or electric electric it is. Oh wow! You pay a big bill here then. For a for a company our size, our, our electric bill is is pretty substantial. But yeah. um, it's it's not. We're not even on Duke's radar. Um, okay. So yeah, there's. Do there you are, have to warrant your products to your to your end customer, or do, we do. do they carry um, the warranty? The residential trash market uh, is a is a uh, an industry that has to adhere to a ten year durability. Okay warranty. So when you get a brand new trash cart, that cart will last 10 years minimally uh, or the trash cart manufacturer has to replace it or replace the component and usually it's uh, it's just more economic to replace an entire cart. Um, so we have to warrant our wheels in the waste industry for 10 years. And there's a, the, the simulation test for that is called the durability during pull test. It's an ANSI uh, standard, and basically you take a cart, load it to full capacity. So our hickory carts, the blue ones and the green ones, those are 96-gallon carts. The standard is 3.5 pounds per gallon, so that's 335 pounds of load. It's pretty heavy. And then you have to simulate taking that out to the curb, dropping it off the curb to take your trash out 520 times, once a week for 10 years. Uh, and so we've got some equipment here that, that simulates that process to make sure that the wheels um, can can handle that beating. Uh, <clears throat> and usually it's the cart that fails before the wheels do. So, um, but that's a good question. Um, that's that's about it. You know, we make products out of rubber and plastic here. Uh, I'm going to take you guys through the plant. We'll walk through and, and s I'll show you the process. Uh, quickly and then we'll let you get on with your days. How big a shot will your injection presses handle? Uh, we have 96 ounce uh, barrels and screws so okay. it's there we have three 500 ton machines and a 385 ton machine. The shot size on the 385 is a little smaller but yeah. for a 500 ton 96 ounce is a pretty big shot size. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the majority of our mold cavities are two cavity molds so we make two parts per cycle. We do have several four cavity molds. Um, matter of fact, this part right here, just the plastic part, is just over half a pound of plastic and it's a four cavity. It's, it's really our largest shot size. And it's about as big as we can go. We make four of these every cycle. If you need me to anything else, help me. Just ask him. <laughs> he should speak to that tire that you have right there. It has the green, the ball bearing, the center. Yep. What is that one for? This is for a trolley that um, that pulls behind an RV full of human waste. Um, Most of the <laughs> yeah, so there's a uh, there's some sort of uh, sucking thing that they make that 
you can suck the, you know, like, uh, what's his name from, uh, vacation. from vacation, um, oh, except yeah, for yeah, yeah. put it into the trolley and take mm -hmm. it, uh, rather than putting it down the drain, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, Where does the trolley take it? <laughs> <laughs> to a collection point. So, rather than take your entire RV yeah. over to a collection point, you th this little trolley thing, apparently it empties it out of the RV, puts it in a container, it's on wheels, so you can either pull it behind your car, or you can actually... And <laughs> turn it over to a collection yeah, area yeah, where it, yeah, you, you can then. See, he's got honey, honey, honey wagon. Yeah. 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 A what? It's a honey um, wagon. Honey wagon. Okay. And this particular piece of business, I didn't know they had this many RVs either, but uh, <clears throat> we will sell. We have two different configurations for this wheel. Um, but we'll sell about 70,000 wheels for that particular use this year. It's a lot of wow. little. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Is that your greenest product? It is definitely our greenest product. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, this this is a prototype. Um, our standard product. If you hold up the silver gray hub wheel there, any 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 one of them. Um, don't hurt yourself. So that is a, that is a propylene, and. It's kind of interesting we're talking about this because years ago, all these wheels used to be, if you'll hold up the silver metal. This one? Yeah. So that's a steel hub. Um, oh, nice. These wheels all used to be steel hub because uh, the industries and users felt like steel was what they needed to get uh, load rating and durability. Split, um, split and yeah. See that. We have now convinced almost all of our customers that that propylene, which is modified with uh, different uh, copolymers for impact, that propylene is actually uh, just as good as that steel as far as load rating and durability goes. And so we color it a silver gray so that it looks a little bit like metal. Um, and it's a little bit more palatable. But um, the load rating on that wheel is the same as if I put a steel hub onto it. Um, and cost-wise, this is a lot cheaper. Uh, plus, this particular material right here uh, is, we found a source that uh, we can get 80% recycled plastic and make this part. Um, there's a, a company that, uh, it's a, it's a post-industrial process they are actually pulling the silver metallic plastic out of chip bags. So the inside lining that's silver, mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it, but they're able to get that out. They're able to get it out in quantities that are high enough that they make a uh, pelletized product. They have the capacity to make five truckloads. So about 210, 220,000 pounds a month of plastic from chip bag liners. Mm -hmm. So that's your most green so wheel. Do, What's that? That's your most green wheel. Yeah. This is a, it is, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, they're all green. It's amazing. The, uh, this plastic in this is 100% uh, is recycled and it is post consumer. So this is, this plastic used to be um, laundry detergent bottles or milk jugs. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a fractional melt polyethylene and that's, the two main uses for that particular type of uh, plastic. Um, the only product that we do not use a recycled plastic on is this one right here, and that's because uh, I'm going to bend it. So this is actually the, it's called a hinge rod or lid axle. It is the axle that a trash lid rides on. Um, so if you look at your trash cart at home, you'll see this tip and you'll see a little clip on the end uh, that holds it in, but it's an axle that rides the whole way. Uh, this is a RFID sticker, so they have the technology now to know exactly where your trash can is, where it's been, uh, etc. inside your trash can. And so we make this for one of our trash cart customers down in Charlotte. Uh, and they have specified a 
um, a virgin, which means initial use, prime material, which means it's made by, uh, it comes straight out of a reactor, um, and it's not modified or blended. It's, um, it's a material that comes from like Exxon or Chevron, one of the companies that uh, Palmer. Yeah, makes, makes products. So they specified that. They know that it virtually doubles the, the price of the material, but they want it that way because they do not want this part to fail. Who uh, fixes the sticker? You? Well, um, as of right now, they do, but they have asked us to do it. Uh, and so we are, actually, this is David Shook right here. He's my plant manager. Um, one of my products, I mean, one of my uh, uh, processes that he is looking at right now is to do this straight out of the machine. One of the challenges we have is that this piece of plastic right here, um, you'll see this when, when we're out there, but uh, we are injecting plastic into a mold cavity at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And in 40 seconds, we bring that temperature down to the point where it will be solid so that it will come out of the mold, uh, and it goes down to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit uh, before it comes out of the mold. So we're cooling it rapidly, but when it comes out of the mold, it still is hot and plastic as it cools shrinks. This part, when it comes out of the mold, is actually an inch and a half longer than when it finally stops shrinking. And so what we're concerned about is if we, if we pull these parts out of the mold, they're still hot, put the sticker on, and it keeps shrinking, what's gonna happen to it? We don't know yet, because um, I think we're going to shoot this part today. We we, uh, we set the t tool up yesterday to, to run in the machine, so um, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. Um, if we can do it straight out of the out of the mold and do it hot, uh, it'll save them money. If we have to wait and double handle it, it'll cost them more. But right now, it's costing them because they have to do it. So. Um, good question. <clears throat> and in the in Westinghouse Industrial Park, mm -hmm. that's where my plant was. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So what do you, what's your background? BF Goodrich Rover. Okay. Testing and analysis. Yeah. Well, good. So you know a lot about this uh, this stuff. Some of it. He yeah. knows a lot about everything. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you, Man of many talents. Do you deal with A. Lakin and Sons out of Chicago for yeah. your crumb? No? <laughs> yeah. um, we, um, I know them. Lakin Tire. Yeah. Um, transport costs would be too high for that. So okay. uh, we buy crumb from a company called New River Tire, which is in New London. Um, they have, they have a good network of collection accounts. Um, it's kind of interesting how everything works these days based on contracts and based on supply. And one of the difficult things to get started in the recycling business, which wasn't a problem probably 15 years ago, is the availability of tires. Because a lot of them are locked down in contracts. So if we wanted to start a tire recycling plant today, our biggest challenge would be where are we going to get the tires? Um, well, Steiger. <laughs> well, I never understood that because you got to go pay or whatever and take them out to the dump. Well, actually, you don't pay. To, you don't pay as part of your taxes to dump, but you do take them to the dump, and then I guess the county sells it by the pound. But yeah, yeah. Um, what a racket! What a racket! Uh, yeah. Actually, the county pays to have them taken away. I would really think the resources are in your back <coughs> if you were to just yeah. contact the retailers and say, I'll take your tires. Yeah, but you have to send a collector around to get them. Right. Yeah, the logistics of that is... We'd bring them to you. Whoa. <laughs> we're taking them to the dump. Yeah, but you yeah. bring two tires a day. I mean, well, no, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's 400 tires every three months, but if you do that times 200 facilities... But do you like it to be palletized or do you actually want it to be full tire? Well, for us, we're not set up to, to grind. It's yeah. got to be they ground. Grind. It's got to be ground. Peels and ground. That metal has to be removed from that tire, too. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's a full process yes. uh, for that. But, um, uh, like, for, 
example, uh, our landfill here is under contract to uh, for New River Tire to get all of their tires, um, mm -hmm. and that's based on whatever the you know the negotiated <coughs> overall cost of getting rid of those tires was, and based on their capacity to get rid of them. Um, you also have uh, tire manufacturers, Goodrich. Um, your Royal Firestone, and Goodyear, um, Bridgestone, and Bridgestone, and um, those those companies generate a lot of waste. You know, you've got uh, you got defects and other other stuff, um, and they've got to have they've got to take that stuff somewhere. We like that rubber because that rubber is it's, it's less oxidized, it's cleaner, uh, and we use a lot of that rubber in our process. You, you love this story when the cattle quit being fed 30 years ago or so and the feedlots went down, we couldn't get calcium stearate to extend our recipes. So at Goodrich, we started running batches of virgin rubber to lay outside to become reclaimable rubber because we had to have 15% reclaim in our tires to make them stable. So we had we had to make you reclaim your own, yeah, yeah our own scrap yeah. on purpose yeah yeah so I don't know I don't know what will uh, what our situation will be in ten years but um, I'm sure it'll be different stockpiles of tires have gone down uh, we still generate a lot of waste tires through automobiles uh, over the road trucking. Um, maritime tires, airplane tires, there are a bunch of tires out there being um, end of life every year. And there's also, we also use a buffings product, which comes from the retread process. So um, for many years we had a problem with getting buffings. The uniqueness about a buffing is that it is, so buffing means um, the, the discard from creating a tire retread. If you're going to take a tire and retread it, the first thing you've got to do is make the outside uh, completely round and flat so that it can accept a cap. They do that by spinning it, rasping it, and basically they shave it off. Uh, and there are little big uh, rubber particles flying off of there. All of that is vacuumed up and then uh, it's reused. It's sifted, sorted, and the largest particles go to mulch because it's pure rubber, there's no steel in it, so it's, um, uh, it's not dangerous. Um, the mid-sized particles, which are approximately rice-sized, that's what's used primarily in poor and place applications like gym floors, tracks, um, any of the stuff that you might see in Lowe's that's a, a rubberized part of some sort, that's got buffings in it. And then the really fine stuff um, is what we use in our process and what's unique about that stuff not only is it all rubber uh, it's a different type of rubber because sidewalls and caps have different rubber compounds in them but it's also a different shape uh, crumb rubber by design if you use a cracker mill to um, to create the final part what you're doing is you're creating like a little nugget um, it's a roundish shape a buffing because of how it's made is more of a needle and um, that's one of our secret sauces is uh, is how we combine those two together to make that process possible um, and so I bring that up because 10 years ago uh, it was more difficult to find buffings and that was because of two things one the retread uh, organization in North America particularly did a pretty bad job of promoting its product and fleet managers started to believe that it was less safe because they saw these tire carcasses on the road they, they heard about uh, the tires blowing and, and so they thought you know it's probably the retreads and they're probably not safe um, when actually the opposite is it is true um, but, uh, and the other thing is, is that uh, there were a lot of very cheap tires coming in, particularly from Southeast Asia. And so where it might cost you 100 bucks to retread um, 
and I just made that number up. I don't know how much it costs, but I cost you a hundred bucks to retread a tire uh, and get a get a new useful life out of it. It might cost you ninety bucks to get a brand new one from China. And so, you know, do you want a new tire for ninety bucks, or do you want a already partially used tire for more money? Um, so now there there have been anti-dumping legislation. There have been uh, tariffs and duties put on uh, Chinese tires, and now it's more difficult to bring a tire in and sell it as new and make it cheaper than a retread. Um, so the retread industry has actually picked back up, and, and the supply of buffings is now uh, adequate to, to, uh, to serve all of its constituent needs. <coughs> there were years where we couldn't get buffings. I mean, we, we survived, but I spent almost all my time trying to find <laughs> buffing sources that were reliable and to try to get them under contract so that we could ensure the supply of that. Your mixing and blending is by screw or by rubber mill or by internal mixer? Screw. Okay. Yeah, we'll see that process out there. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, well. we're going to take a okay. quick run through the Todd, planet. real quick. Before yeah. you get away, go. Todd. As a past president, I get the chore of replacing the president momentarily. Okay. We have a manufacturing process in our Rotary Club, too, and he's sitting right there. And he's a woodworker and a fine arts craftsman. Oh, wow. And like to oh, very nice. Well, thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Todd. Yes, hey, Bob, 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 sorry. Before we all go out. We're in our last of the month crunch to push product out. <laughs> sure. You're done. Please disregard any mess you see. <laughs> <laughs> because we are trying to push. Sure. Do we have, do we need to stop? Yeah, I think just, 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 we have some here. I don't know how many goggles.